Okay, we've got a question here from Rick Fuentes. Uh, Rick is a candidate for U.S. Congress, an independent running in Michigan's uh, 3rd District. Rick? Good evening, Mr. LaRouche. Good. Nice to meet you. Good. I've been sitting here uh, listening to all the uh, comments by the other people, and we all seem to have the same things in common uh, that deals with the loss of jobs, uh, human dignity, uh, you know, health care, and so forth. And as I agree with the young lady from Texas and the gentleman from San Francisco, yes, it is very hard to get a hold of your congressmen or federal senators or even your state people, uh, but you should do what I do. I don't bother going to their meetings because half the time we had one that didn't want to go there unless he had Secret Service with him. <laughs> so, do as I do. I have my governor, my state and federal senators and congressmen, I have them all on speed dial. <laughs> and I guarantee you, when I get a hold of an issue, I will call them twice a day, every day, but I have gotten answers. And I will get them to visit my city. But my biggest question is, I, I've listened to you about the Glass Eagle, the Nawapa, and I understand how the Nawapa can, uh, at least on the east side of the country, can bring jobs. But how, um, as far as the Glass Eagle, how will that help bring back some of these jobs that are lost, uh, hopefully all of the jobs that have been lost in this country, and, and bring us back to where we need to be? And the second part of this is, um, as you say, you know, we need to have uh, uh, the president impeached. And I'm sure people would have in their mind, how do you go about supporting this with the NDA? In fact, I've read the NDA, uh, some of the information on the NDA uh, to think of some of the minor things that they would classify you as a terrorist for. I'm sure they would classify you if you even supported something like this. How do you avoid that? because I'm sure there was a lot of people, like you say, that would hardly support uh, the impeachment of, of the president and the other clowns. Well, uh, first thing is, as in warfare, uh, let's take the case of a famous German commander, Frederick the Great, so-called. And uh, he always went into his battles. He usually won them with fewer troops than the well-equipped adversary. And what he did, he always outflanked them. In other words, they would come up in the most famous of these battles. He came in with his tired troops, an inferior number of, of troops, against an Austrian army, which was very well-equipped and well-rested and so forth. And he whipped them twice in the same day. And the way he did that was that they were, he got his troops to break ranks, go around a hill, and this was twice in the same day, same battle, and come up on the rear, or the flank in the rear, of the Austrian forces, which were well-fed, well austrian but they were also crowded, because they were all crowding together in orderly ranks, and they hit them on the flank, and well, they were taken by surprise, and they were routed. And, so that the, it's not always the strength, the physical strength, the numbers of a force that wins a battle. And he did this fairly regularly, not always, but regularly. It's, it's the way you are organized and the way you think, and you organize your thinking, which may win a war. Sometimes a, w a very weak force. It's like the so-called Gideon's army for, uh, concept from the the Old Testament, um, that sort of thing. So the, the main thing is to understand what your strengths are, your potential strengths, both in respect to what you're going to do and the reason you're going to do it, what the motive is for doing it. And you have to outflank the problem. Uh, I, when I say Glass-Steagall and national banking, the national banking system, that's what I mean. 
these measures are intrinsically flanking issues. But for example, take the case of money as a power. Where's the power of money lie in the United States today? It lies in worthless assets, gambling assets. What do you think the Federal Reserve System is indebted in? Gambling money. It's not real money, and this doesn't represent any real wealth whatsoever. It's gambling money, gambling debts. Now, if you don't have to pay the gambling debts, if the United States government doesn't have to pay gambling debts to gamblers, and the, what the Federal Reserve System today is nothing but a gambling system. It's nothing but a gambling den. It's an international gambling den. We're being, uh, the blood of the people of the United States are being sucked by the Federal Reserve System and its system of gambling debts and the British system of gambling debts. That's what's destroying this economy. Now, if you simply take a measure and say, okay, those are gambling debts, right? No production involved, right? In other words, there's no value involved, right, buddy? They just see your gambling debts. I, hmm? Therefore, we don't pay gambling debts. We do not pay your gambling debts. We pay what we owe you in terms of productive things and services and so forth. We pay you for that. But we don't pay your gambling debts. And what is, what is Wall Street doing? What is the Federal Reserve System doing? It's gambling debts. You don't owe this much stuff. Under our law, under our Constitution, we don't owe you anything. But you say, we, ha we have this bank. These, these bets, you've got to pay our debts. No, they're gambling debts, buddy. We don't owe you anything. We don't owe Las Vegas for your debts. You want to get debt, your debts collected? Go to what, Las Vegas and try to... Uh, Take ask organized crime to pay the debt, if you can. So we take we use the power of the United States. We cancel the, the gambling debts. Suddenly we don't have all these debts. Well, sure, a lot of banks are going to go bankrupt. Fine, better better them than us. We are destroying our nation with these gambling debts. So what do we do? We say we, let's go back to the system of Glass Steagall, under which we don't pay gambling debts. And this was a swindle. So we cancel the swindle. Hey, buddy, sorry. But then somebody comes, well, what about my money? What about my money? Hey, buddy, that was a gambling debt. That's not your money. That's a fraud. And we're not paying your gambling debts. That means that we can now take all the money, which is not gambling debts, but which is normal banking debt, commercial banking debt, and we say, okay, we owe that. The United States government owes that. We've got to do something in compensating these people for these losses. So we will strengthen, we will rebuild every commercial bank we can rebuild. But the problem is so much money has been wasted by the gambling debts huh, that we, it, we don't have enough to actually organize a recovery of the nation. Therefore, we have to find how are we going to get the money, the, the, the negotiable money, which we're going to use to save the nation. Well, we're going to go cancel the system and go to a credit system. And the credit system will be a guarantee by the federal government that the funds will be available as promised by the federal government in order to conduct certain projects which are useful to our people, useful to the nation, the national interest, and the interest of our people. We have people who have lost skills over the past 20 years. We've lost skills, especially since George Bush Jr. got in there and since this clown got in there. We've lost this. Therefore, we've got to Bring this back. We've got to take people who have no skills, young people, put them to work. Train them. We're going to have to take large projects like Noapa. We have some, some people who are still highly skills, skilled. Some are retired, but they know how to build things. We're going to build Noapa. 
It's a 30-year project. It's the greatest project that mankind has ever undertaken. And that project, like the Tennessee Valley Project, which was done under Franklin Roosevelt, which is a precedent for this, will be implemented. We're going to take useless people among our young people. We're going to provide employment for them, as we did, Roosevelt did, in the 1930s. We're going to build up the skills of these young people. We're going to turn them into not slobs, but turn them into productive people with increasing skills as they show the ability, give them the skills, engineering skills, other high technology skills. Rebuild the, what the United States was in World War II, the way we rebuilt the United States under Franklin Roosevelt, that time for the war. And that way we build, re, rebuild the U.S. economy. It's elementary. We all, we all should know that. We should all know the unemployment problem we have in the United States, we all should know that the danger, the absolute danger of the drug problem, which is integrated with the youth problem and the unemployment problem. You see people living on the streets, people, young people living on the streets, drugged, useless, and becoming criminalized and worse. We have to restore our people back to a sense of human existence. We've got to rebuild their health care systems. And we can do it. We do it by this method. We use our, the credit of our nation and its devotion to its fulfilling its promises. And we use that to build the nation back again. Now, I'm not going to be around for that many years more. I'm almost 90. But do it for me. Rebuild this nation so that those of you who are three younger generations than I am represent can continue the job and rebuild a nation which, of which we not, need not be ashamed.